Yes, inshallah. You can find the case shared now on the on the books, Dr. Abdullah. I will unmute you now so that one second, I'll make you unmute you. Okay, Dr. Abdullah, you can see the the case now. Okay, salam alaikum, Dr. Alaikum salam. Is this gonna be station four, uh, five or two? Five, station five case. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so doctors, if we wanted to talk about headache, you can analyze the headache as usual. Side onset course duration, what increase, what decrease, effective treatment, due to plus at ten. You should not miss any point from this. If it is around the eye, so think about cluster headache, and we said before it's unilateral, unitimer with congestion. Treatment is subcutaneous or nasal triptans. Okay, prophylaxis, calcium channel blockers, and verapamil. Okay. Oral triptans ineffective in cluster headache. Okay. And we said before congestion in the nose, congestion in the eyes. Look, runny nose, red tears in the eyes, forehead, sinusitis, abnormal sensation in the face, trigeminal neuralgia, onset. If it is thunderclap headache, Think about subarachnoid hemorrhage, and at this time, past history of the history of intracranial bleed, persistent kidney disease, alcohol abuse, trauma. And here, if you think that this is a, a bleeding case that causes headache, though, so ask directly about the four questions of bleeding. What are the four questions of bleeding, doctors? Doctors who attended with us before, what are the four questions of bleeding? Any doctor can write on the chat box. He, he or she is welcome to write in the chat. Yes, past history, personal history, not drug. It's blood thinning medications. Don't use drugs here. Eh? Blood thinning medications. Okay. Any any past history bleeding? Any previous bleeding? Are you using any uh, any? Uh, are you bleeding from any other side? Are you using any blood thinning medications? Why are you asking about family history, doctors? Very important. Because we are trying to know whether this patient is having is having hemophilia or hereditary hemorrhagic plangectasia or von Willebrand disease. Okay, that's why we are asking about family history of bleeding. We said before the onset is a new onset or, or a character different from P4. Go down to the character, if it is band-like, for sure you will think about tension headache, and this is the most common. Yes, doctor, and this is very common even between us doctors. As physicians, by the end of the day, you start to have headache. For sure, it will increase by the end of the day, and for sure, it increases with, it increases with sleep deprivation and stress. And the treatment for this, simple analgesia. Then, the character, it's not band-like. It's bounding pulse, doctor. Think about migraine, which is P for pulsating, photophobia, phonophobia, increases with period, and O for onset from four to 72 hours, and U, unilateral, and N for nausea, and D, disabling plus Oh, plus or minus aura, and we said that increases with alcohol. Next is scalp tenderness. Oh, sorry, the treatment. We, we forgot to talk about the treatment. Simple analgesia first, aspirin or profen, or paracetamol for sure. It didn't work. You can use oral triptans. Next is scalp tenderness, giant cell arthritis, temporal arthritis. Do you have any visual affection? 
Geoclodication, stiffness in the shoulders. Think about polymyalgia aromatica. Then, then the radiation of the pain. You can ask about radiation as well. If it's radiating to uh, the eye, ask about Camry TV, as we said, C for cluster headache. A for acromegaly, and then if you found acromegaly, you should ask about men, M for migraine, R refraction errors, I intracranial pressure, ICP, T for temporal arthritis, and V for uh, 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 venous thrombosis. Okay, next association is it associated with any? Uh, systemic manifestations, fever, headache, anorexia, malaise, think about meningitis, encephalitis. Is it associated with any neuro manifestations? Think about weakness, nausea and vomiting, increased intracranial pressure, timing, if it is more in the morning, increased intracranial pressure. Why, doctors, I'm writing everything now? Because, sorry, because if you looked at this slide and looked to the gentleman in the previous slide, you will find everything is found on the previous man in the previous slide. Okay, but I'm writing the things for you now to know that the previous slide will summarize the headache for you. And once you found a case of headache in station two or even station five, it's a gift. Next, doctors, the exacerbating and leading factors. Next, of Socrates, you know, we are following the Socrates mnemonic. Exacerbating or leading factor. If it is increasing with upright position, and decreases with recumbent position and the recent procedure think about post lumbar puncture headache okay sorry this is i by mistake if this heat headache increases with leaning forward think about icp increased intracranial pressure if it decreases with the sleeping the headache decreases improves with the sleeping think about migraine severity any head any pain more than seven doctors needs admission for sure, okay? If it is now present and it's scoring seven out of 10, the patient needs to be admitted. And then ask about the past history, as we said, procedure, lost, post lumbar puncture headache, diabetes, hypoglycemia, drugs, medication, overuse headache. And at this point, you should ask about the medication by name. Are you using, don't ask him only, can you show me your medication list? Are you using any over-the-counter medications? Are you using any painkillers for a long period? Yes, doctor, or no. Then hypertension, high or low. Family history, very important. Doctors ask about uh, the uh, polycystic kidney disease. Why I put this in red color? The red man, carbon monoxide poisoning. Ask about job and residency. Then, are you uh, are you moved to a new house recently? Did you have a new job? Did you notice that symptoms improves if you went away from your home or from your job? Any other one in the family or the relatives or your friends in the job having the same type of headache? Is there any fuel burning devices like heaters, for example? This is very important. Okay, see doctors. We wrote lots of things here in these two slides. Everything is summarized with gentlemen. You will bring all the causes of headache from just looking at your patient inside the station five and station two. No need to remember things from any paper. Just look at your patient and you will bring everything from his face. Okay, the slide after this, we, doctors who attended with us we are, before, we are now learning with each other how to pick up the causes of any disease from the mnemonic of the disease itself. For example, patient came with ICP, increased intracranial pressure. Now you will, you may stuck inside the exam station because you will be very stressed and you'll forget lots of causes of increased intracranial pressure. But with this, you will not fail, you will not miss inshallah. So the headache of intracranial pressure, what is the manifestations? It's LM, N O S L M N O S. What are this? Headache increase. This was leaning forward, morning headache, associated with nausea, 
Oh. Hello, doctors. You can hear me now? Hello, doctors. Okay. Hello. Okay, thank you, doctor. So, leaning forward, morning headache, nausea, O for eye because the eye is rounded, yes? Do you have any blurring of vision? You are asking about double edema for sure, yes? And then S for sneezing, so L-M-N-O-S. These are the manifestations of increased intracranial headache. What are the causes of increased intracranial headache, doctors? It's ICP. ICP, 2I, 2C, 2P. These are the causes of increased intracranial headache. The first is idiopathic intracranial hypertension, which is named pseudotumor cerebri. Okay, obese patient using steroids or tetrinone or tetracyclines. These are the most common causes of uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension. I infection because meningitis encephalitis can increase the intracranial pressure. Okay, and these two affects the vision as well because they are part of the Camry TV. Next is clot. In patient having sinus thrombosis will have increased intracranial pressure and also his eye will be affected. Third and sixth cranial nerves will be affected and sometimes seventh cranial nerve depends on which sinus is clotted. And then you should ask about the manifestations of sinus thrombo of uh, six questions of blood clot plus any recent infection in your face. You know, doctor, the, the dangerous area of the face which, ex which extends from the angle of the eye outside to the angle of the mouth inside. If he is, he, if he is having, if the, if the person is having any boil, for example, at this area and he pressed it, he may have cavernous sinus thrombosis. So, so what are the six questions of blood clot doctors? You can write on the chat box, please. What are the six questions of, the, uh, of this? Can you please write, share with us on the chat box? Phoenix, okay. Antiphospholipid syndrome, okay. Basic disease, okay. Okay. So, do you have do you have any past history of blood clot or family history of blood clot? No, doctor. Are you use Are you smoking or using OCPs? No, doctor. Are you using? Uh, sorry. Do you have any problem in your heart, like uh, valve replacement? For example, or irregular heart beats, you are asking about patient with trifibrillation or a prosthetic band. Both can cause this. Okay. Then ask about EBP, A for antiphospholipid syndrome, any history of miscarriage before or a history of blood clot before. The most important is miscarriage and blood clot. Others like skin rash or joint pain. Then ask about. Yes, doctor, for sure, cancer, it's a, a hyperagreable condition, for sure. Uh, um, what else? Uh, then ABP, basic disease, do you have any mouth sores, any sores in private area? No, doctor. These are the screening questions. Then ask about B, B for paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Did you notice any change in the color of your urine in the early morning? No. And B also for polythysemia rubravera, because polythysemia rubravera causes viscosity. Did you notice that, um, do you have any high blood pressure or do you have any itching? This itching increases after taking a hot bath. Yes, doctor, I'm happy. Or it may be polythysemia. Patient with COPD for a long period or patient having living in a high altitude. And we said, you should ask the patient about housing. You know, doctor, in the sharp G, the mnemonic for social history is sharp G, as we took in the previous days. Okay, let's continue. Then we said clot. Then we said cancer. Cancer is a hypercalculable condition. Breast, bone, prostate. This is very important. Pituitary, prolactinoma, acromegaly. Then B for bleeding. Okay, intracranial bleed. So these are the causes of increased intracranial pressure. See how did we bring them from the ICB itself? So you in the in the exam station will not be stressed trying to catch the things. What are they? Very important. IIH, infection, clot, cancer, pituitary, and bleeding. And then IIH, again we said pregnancy, 
weight gain, steroids, OCBs, tetracyclines. Okay, what is the normal, because it may be a uh, uh, question from the examiner, he may ask you, what is the normal intracranial pressure? It's 15, one five, one five. Okay, one, Sorry, it's, it, it looks like the, the number five, a little bit like the number five in, in Arabic. One, five. So it's one, five. 15 millimeter mercury from 15 to 40, this is asymptomatic increase. After 40, this is symptomatic. The patient started to have symptoms if it is increasing more than 40. What to examine in a case of headache? Doctor, tell the patient, the, the examiner, say, I'd like to examine to measure the temperature of this patient. Very important, very important. See, blood pressure will not be important like examining the temperature here, okay? Because temperature can differentiate things for you. He's having serious problem like meningitis or encephalitis, okay? Eye, don't forget the eye doctor. Eye for babilidema and also examining the eye movements. This is very important and we said why. Neurosystem and the abdomen, don't forget the polycystic kidney disease. Okay, again, thunderclap headache with bitemporal hemanopia, pituitary apoplexy. There is a case in Egypt who attended the course in, in Egypt, patient with, with Sheehan syndrome. Okay, she had a headache and then, uh, sorry, sorry, doctor. There is, yes, there is one patient with, uh, uh, in Egypt, yes, there is one patient in Egypt, she had Sheehan syndrome, sorry, it's different from here. Thunderclap headache and by temporal hemanopia. Okay, so doctor, see, this is one slide. This is two slides. This is three slides. Three slides, you know, full of information, all abbreviated in this slide. This gentleman. So in the exam, please, doctor, what I want you to do in a case of headache to look at this gentleman. To look at your patient. Do, you, do you, this headache is unilateral or bilateral? It's unilateral, doctor. Do you have feel that it's band-like tension headache? Do you have any scalp tenderness or jugular education? Think about temporal arthritis or bromel Do you have any headache at the forehead? Sinusitis. Any eye problem? We said Camry TV cluster headache, acromegaly, migraine, refraction error, increased intracranial hypertension, and we said temporal arthritis and venous thrombosis. Do you have any pulsatile tinnitus, glomerular jugular tumor, and examine the cranial nerves 9, 11, 9, 10, 11. Open your mouth, say ah, ah, shrug your shoulder up. Very easy. Runny nose, blocked nose, cluster headache. Do you have any neck stiffness in your nigility, meningitis, encolitis, or subarachnoid hemorrhage? Any shoulder stiffness? Think about temporal arthritis, polymer Do you have, did you notice that your face turned red? So think about carbon monoxide poisoning. Abnormal sensation in the face, trigeminal neuralgia. Then, past history, family history. Okay? Past history, family history. Do you have any past history of any chronic diseases? No. Any recent procedure or operation? No. Any medications? No. Are you using any over-the-counter medication or analgesic for a long period? No. That's it. Okay? So you give the diagnosis. From this slide, doctor, now, I'm sure, inshallah, if you encounter the case of a headache inside your station, it will be a gift. It will be a gift. Okay? Please don't forget to examine the eye. If you did not examine the eye and offer to examine fundoscopy in any case of headache, you will not pass the station, if, even if you get the diagnosis. This is very important. Please examine the fundoscopy. Please examine the eye movement for the patient. Please examine, uh, uh, ask for examining the temperature of the patient and offer to examine the blood pressure. Okay, doctor, now you get you, you know how to get the diagnosis, so very, very easy. It's snobs plus this gentleman, okay? Now, uh, Dr. Agiri, you, you ask it about the, the difference between cluster headache and the migraine. Migraine usually comes unilateral in one eye, but uh, uh, the cluster headache comes around, sorry, migraine comes in only unilateral in one side of the head, usually, but it can come bilateral, okay? Preceded by aura, for example, he can smell something abnormal, he can have eye problem here, in, uh, and also it's bounding, as we said, Photophobia, phonophobia, bounding, the onset is uh, from 4 to, 20 to 72 hours lasting with him, okay? And it is sibling him as well. Cluster headache, we said, simple line, unilateral, unitimer congestion. Unilateral comes at the same time, unilateral comes around one eye only. Here or here, unilateral, unitimer comes at the same time, either of the day or either of the year. 
unilateral unitimer. And then uh, uh, with congestion, congestion in the eye, red hearing, congestion in the nose, which is uh, which will be uh, uh, which will be uh, blocked and uh, yes, and stuffy. Okay, uh, is it clear now, doctors? Clear. Now we finished the case of headache. Look at this gentleman. Look at your patient in station to station five, and fine. And within one minute, inshallah, we'll get the diagnosis. Okay, doctors. Any question now? We have to move to the next case. Obstructive sleep apnea can cause headache. Um, I don't know. I don't know. For my knowledge, I don't know. It can cause fatigue. Yes, it can cause snoring. It can cause shortness of breath, pulmonary hypertension. But headache may be morning headache, maybe. Maybe, yes. Morning headache, yes, for sure. We can add, add it here also in the next. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, doctor, for adding this, uh, this uh, thing. Okay. Doctors who raised their hands. Dr. Abdullah and Dr. Muhammad Imran. Unmute and, uh, and Dr. Salik. Okay. Doctor, uh, Khalid, can, can I ask yeah. one question? Yeah. I, I, I had one patient, uh, one case in station five with headache. The patient have headache for two weeks. And uh, and uh, it is one side and throbbing type of headache. And what? He, uh, throbbing headache. Okay. One side of the face for two weeks. And uh, he is taking medication, he is acromegalic for 10 years, and he is receiving medications. Uh, Been was 8 by 10. I, uh, I mentioned everything about the uh, cause of headache. Uh, I am differential, and uh, I exclude, I did not find any cause. Uh, he don't have any problem with his vision. I ask to, to CT brain and admission. They said, and with the feedback, uh, he want to do CT brain. And I got four over 28. You get four what? Over 28 in the case. And you told them, and you told them what? You told the, exam, the, the, the diagnosis what? I told I told uh, could be uh, giant cell arthritis arthritis. I told it could be uh, due to new uh, new this pituitary uh, adenoma. I told uh, could be trigeminal neuralgia. And I, Doctor, I said, uh, you, you, I, I'll tell you something. Green. This is the way how to yes. Dr. Agil asked it a very important, what about the nature of headache in migraine? Oh, you know, he was asking about it. You should have asked him about this headache. Is it started only two weeks ago and it's a throbbing headache? It started only two weeks ago? And yes. your patient was a chromegalic doctor, yes? In station five? Yes. Okay. See, yes. doctor, I will tell you something. There is very important thing. If any doctor attended the course with Dr. Majdi in Egypt, he will say, very, very nice word. I am, I am the son of concern. In Arabic, anabnil concern. I am the son of concern. Don't be misleaded by any disease. Because for example, patient come, may come to you acromegaly and he's complaining of headache. And you will think that, and you will think that his headache is secondary to acromegaly. Do you think, do you think that he will simply bring a case to you in the exam? To tell him that this is agromegaly, any small child in the city can tell him that this is agromegaly. So you have to ask him about his concern or about the, the nature of this headache. Is this headache started two weeks, two years ago? Is it only in one side? Is it two throbbing? Weeks. Throbbing, the doctor, throbbing, the throbbing headache happens with migraine, which is pounding, or can cause with glomus jugular tumor, but it causes pulsating tinnitus. But acromegaly or pituitary tumor will not cause will not cause throbbing headache. It will not cause throbbing headache. So you have to you have to ask him first at this note. I didn't know exactly if you can send me your sheet mark doctor by the end of the on my email. I can say I can I will try to translate what what the points in this uh, for what happened. But mostly your patient was not secondary to an acromegaly. It may be 
thunder clap headache subarachnoid hemorrhage for example or he may have uh, this uh, uh, migraine okay he was 62 years old migraine yes. can come in uh, 62 yes no, at any age first onset? at any age yes first onset i can at any age so uh, mostly your patient was migraine versus polycystic kidney disease okay but uh, to uh, this if subarachnoid hemorrhage it will be two weeks subarachnoid hemorrhage can can present in acute or even subacute subacute presentation okay because it may be it shouldn't be a big artery which uh, which ruptured maybe a small vessel ruptured and blood started when to i ruptured. told yeah when i told them uh, gent cell arthritis they said uh, how long this headache i told them two weeks they said do you think gent cell arthritis will be long for two weeks this is not the age of gent cell arthritis doctor gent cell arthritis comes at the age of 50 not the age of 26 okay Okay. 60, 62, 62. Oh, sorry, you said your patient 26 or 62? 62. You said 26. Sorry, maybe by mistake, but it's 62. Okay, okay. So, uh, um, yes, it may be subarachnoid hemorrhage. I don't know what was the character of the, of, the, of the headache, you know, because the character will solve the things very rapidly. Will solve the thing. If you went with this mind map, inshallah, in this uh, gentleman, you can get the diagnosis again. If you remember the scenario, you will get it from here again, inshallah. And even if you can send me the okay. shipment, we can negotiate with each other. Okay. okay. One doctor uh, in course said that if being more than seven, you should do CT brain. Yes, doctor, that right? urgent, urgent CT. I, I CT said brain that and they, they mentioned in the feedback they want to do CT brain. Okay, admission does not mean admission to the world. Admission means admission, even admission in the ER. So even if you keep the patient with you in the ER for six hours, this is called admission. Admission does not necessarily mean admitting the patient in the ICU or in the ward. Keeping him inside the ER for six hours or whatever, this is called admission. Okay, next. How about CT? Sorry. For sure, he needs we'll a CT doctor, patient, patient uh, with- In the feedback they said they want to do CT. I, doctor, I, I, don't, I don't know what exactly was the case. You are telling me you are telling me some pieces of the case, only pieces. Um, so if you can bring the case again, we can. If you collected the case, we can say inshallah what happened in the case and what was the mistake. Okay. Okay. Thank uh, Thank but you. for sure, doctor, I'm sure that. Uh, are you sure that you examined his cranial nerves and neurological system? This may be the point. Okay. Any question? We have to make move to the next. Okay, can we move to the next uh, case, doctors? Okay, Dr. Salik wants to ask a question because we have to move to the next case. Okay, Dr. Salik. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Alaikum, salam. Uh, sir, can you kindly repeat the Camry TV so I could not recap? Okay, doctor. It's Camry C for cluster headache. Please write them down. C for cluster headache. Okay, sir. E acromegaly, M migraine, R refraction errors, I idiopathic intracranial hypertension, T for temporal arthritis, and V for venous thrombosis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Um, Okay, doctors. Um, okay. Um, one second. Okay, doctors. Uh, who who booked the next case for uh, practicing? Doctors, or who wants to um, uh, practice the next case? It will be station four. So the last case, doctors can work as a station five and then station two, so that I put it today instead of being only in the station two. Okay. <clears throat> Who wants to, to take the next case, doctors? It will be a station four. Any doctor wants to share the case, he can raise his or her hand.
kindly share what's happening. Okay, okay, doctor. I will share it, inshallah, by the end of this session. Any doctor wants to take this case? Dr. Abdullah again. Any, any other one wants to take? If no one wants to take this case, Dr. Sami, I think she asked it today to take the case. Dr. Walid with us also today. I'm happy to see him today. Um, uh, okay, okay. Okay, Dr. Sami, uh, just please raise your hand. I'm preparing the case to you. Just please raise your hand. Okay, Dr. Sami, I will unmute you now. You are unmuted, Dr. Sami. I'm just preparing the case the case for the next I'm giving you some uh, some rest for one minute. So, Dr. Osamia, you can see the case now, Doctor. The case is on the the case on uh, the board. You can see the case, Dr. Osamia. Yes, it's shared already. <laughs> Dr. Osamia, you are unmuted. Yes. 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 Okay, Dr. Osamia. This is your case. <laughs> She was at okay. Sorry, sorry, the Thank you, Doctor, for correcting me. When you are ready, Victor, I'm not sure if you can see my desktop now or not. Yes, Doctor. Okay. Just, just I will share the link for the new doctors who are, who are with us for the first time. This is the WhatsApp group, and this is also the, uh, the Telegram also. 
this is a WhatsApp and this is a Telegram and inside them you can find the YouTube channel. Okay, Dr. Family. You are ready? You are ready, Dr. Samia? Yeah. Hello. Uh, uh, good, morning. Um, good morning. This is Dr. Samia, one of the doctors here today. Is this uh, Mrs. Kona? Yes, that's here. Yes. Is this Mrs. Kona? Yes. Uh, 37 years of age. Yes, that's here, doctor. Uh, nice to be in this corner. Welcome. Um, Mrs. Kona, mm, uh, we are here to discuss. Sorry? Mrs. Kona, we are here to discuss uh, health issues regarding you. Is that fine you? with you? Who are you? Uh, I already. Uh, introduced myself oh, hello this is doc Samia, one of the doctors here today yeah. uh, is this um this corner yes that's here 37 years of age yes that's here nice meeting you mrs corner mrs corner uh, we are here to discuss health issues regarding you is that fine with you sure doctor it's okay uh, how are you feeling today? Um, I'm good, doctor. I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know, Miss uh, Kona. Yeah. <laughs> yes, doctor. Go on. Miss Kona. Um, Mrs. Kona. Uh, may I know how much do you know about your health condition so far? Um, I was admitted, doctor, here in the hospital with bug in my chest. And then uh, it was, uh, I was told that it was severe, and that's why they admitted me. They okay. gave me antibiotics inside my bloody channels. And um, for the last uh -huh. five, six days, I'm improving. I'm, I'm well now. I cannot feel any problem. Even if I, even I, uh, I'm okay. I didn't sleep for the last two months. Um, but in the hospital, you did a very good job for me. Thank you very much, doctors. You are a very nice team. I slept well in the hospital, um, and I was told today that I'm I'm ready to be discharged from the hospital. So okay. Well, uh, Mrs. Uh, okay, Mrs. Kona, um, uh, uh, what are your expectations from a meeting today? Yes, doctor. You know, I didn't sleep for the last two years, two 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 months. But here in the hospital, they gave me medications, helped me very well, and I slept very nicely. Okay, um, mm -hmm. but but I, I asked them to give me some medications for the next one month, and um, please, I I am asking you for this. If you can help me, mm -hmm. um, highly appreciate your concern, Mrs. Kona. Uh, before we uh, go on, um, uh, would you allow me to tell you in detail about what had happened actually? For sure, doctor. Yes. Yeah. As you came to us, uh, you were admitted with a bug infection of your uh, lungs, as you're aware of that. And you have been given, um, uh, if you allow me, I will draw that uh, where the infection was. So I'm drawing here the um, picture of a lung. So uh, this infection, uh, there was an infection of the bug for which the consultant, a chest consultant, and all of uh, us um, in his team had started an uh, antibiotic and other medications. Well, uh, the good news is that uh, you are doing very good, Mrs. No Kona, and uh, you have recovered very well from the uh, infection, bug infection. And... Uh, uh, I have a really good news for you. I, you can be discharged today to home. How are you feeling with this uh, news? I'm very happy to hear this, Doctor. I will go back to my life, finally. Mm -hmm. oh, well, uh, Mrs. Kona, the doctor has written uh, some uh, medications for you. 
which you will continue for a couple of days, including the remaining antibiotics and some supportive medications, uh, which you will take at home. And then uh, we will be, uh, um, we have fixed an appointment in the next week for your follow-up. Will that be fine? Yes, doctor. Thank you very much. But what about my tablets, mm -hmm. doctor? Well, Mrs. Kona, I highly appreciate your feelings and concern. Uh, you, um, um, the request you're putting is really, um, may I know why you want to take these uh, tablets first before yes, I actually, take you in? You know, I didn't sleep for the last one month uh, or one, two months nearly. I didn't sleep. The first time, you know, I slept only maybe in one day for two hours, maximally three hours. And even the three hours are intermittent, interrupted. They are not continuous. I was suffering so much. Mm. But here in the hospital, I slept very well. And these medications work well with me. So that I, I want them again, please. Well, um, uh, what have you heard about these medications? Or... Um, Heard? I mean, I, um, no, yeah. I, I didn't hear anything. Okay, um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Connor, um, may I know why you were not sleeping well in the past few months? I didn't sleep, Doctor Will. I didn't sleep well. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you working as? I'm working as a secretary, Doctor. Is there any stress in the work? Very stressful work, doctor. Very stressful work. You cannot imagine. No, very stressful work. I hardly, I'm I hardly really sorry. go back to my home. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I can um, just speak to the occupational health worker and can see that uh, what best can be done for you, uh, and uh, so can have a support of a social health worker as well. Um, uh, Mrs. Kona, um, is it affecting your, uh, like, is this job affecting your day-to-day um, -day life? Like, do you feel really stressed at home as well? Yes, doctor, I'm very stressed. Uh, you know, I'm very stressed, anxious, nervous. Everything you can say, I was in, okay. in the last two months, I was like this. Okay. Do you smoke? Yes, doctor, I'm smoking. How many cigarettes? 30 cigarettes every day. Since how long? Maybe the last uh, 20 years. Have you ever thought of quitting smoking? No, I did not try before. If you, are, um, if you can uh, like love me, I can send you to smoking cessation clinic. They will help you in quitting smoking. It will be best for your health. Is that okay? I'll, I'll think about it. All right. Do you uh, do you drink alcohol? No, doctor. I don't. I did not. I don't. All right. Okay. Um, uh, tell me. Um, um, uh, any other concern you have? Yes, doctor. I'm just concerned about this. This sleeping. I'm afraid if I went back again to my home I may not be able able to sleep again you know that's so why I'm, I'm, um, I'm asking for these tablets I'm really sorry these medications are uh, really controlled medications and if we uh, give these medicines you will have a dependence on the them in view of your uh, lot of stress, probably you're not sleeping because of that stress. I can um, uh, uh, take a, we can take a help from the social health worker and a, a mood doctor who can help you and see what uh, is going on. Is that okay with you? I'm not in a bad mood doctor. Why you are why you are want, why do you want to refer me to the mood doctor? I'm just stressful, but I'm not a mad lady. You know, I'm not a mad lady. Yeah. You think that I'm mad? Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I mean to say that I wanted to um, 
give you a support uh, so that uh, your stress will be a little bit uh, released. Okay, so you refer me to him. I'm going to refer you and take help from a social health worker who can give you a support and who can like just um, help you in your stressful condition. Okay. Um, uh, Mrs. Kona, let me summarize what I have told you if you allow me. Okay. Mrs. Kona, um, <clears throat> as you came with the bug infection of the lung, uh, you were treated by a chest uh, consultant and all of us. And uh, presently you are doing well. The infection is cleared. And today the good news is that you are going home. Uh, you are fit to discharge. Uh, as you are asking for the medication, um, it's uh, actually, as I told you before, that these medicines have... Um, uh, side effects. They have a big side effect of dependence. See, uh, Mrs. Kona, uh, I uh, let me explain you in detail about these medications. Whenever we give any medicine, we waive the side effects and benefits. In the hospital, we have given you certain kind of such medicines. They were at that time in your best interest, and uh, the benefits were outweighing the side effects. And at that time, you needed the good rest as in order to curb that bug infection. But as you are now discharging and you are uh, physically fit, we would uh, advise you not to continue with the medications and we will not suggest those medicines. Only because now, if we continue to give those medicines, the side effects will be more than the benefits. I hope you're getting me. Okay, doctor. I got you. So you not give me these medications, doctor? Uh, um, I'm again telling you that um, I'm sorry that uh, the medicines uh, will not uh, be beneficial for you. Uh, on the contrary, it can be, it can prove really dangerous for you. Uh, you know, you may uh, stay drowsy and uh, it will hamper your driving also and your capabilities of doing day-to-day -day work. Um, I hope you're with me. Doctor, two minutes remaining. How, how, will, how, how will I sleep, doctor? I, I couldn't sleep. I'm sure that when I will go back to my home, I will not sleep. Well, I highly appreciate your concern, Mrs. Corona. I will talk to your occupational health worker who can give you a sick leave for a couple of uh, days so that you recover well and the stress will be a little bit released. And once you will be de-stressed, you will maintain your sleep hygiene and uh, then uh, you will uh, try to get, you know, um, uh, and... Um, we we are sure that uh, the sleep uh, um, with the maintaining of proper sleep hygiene your sleep will be good um, but it will need some days to recover for that we will just uh, try to talk we'll talk to your um, uh, occupational health worker who can uh, try for your sick leaves for a couple of days is that fine with you okay doctor. okay um, I hope uh, what I told you, you are getting me. May I know what you understood from our discussion today so that I can see that we are on the same page. Okay, doctor, I got you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. This is Connor. Okay, discussion. So, doctor, what did you find in this patient? Or how, how, how well, did you do with him? I, it was a really difficult case for me. Um, it's like a, pa a person, a patient is asking for a medication which can have a dependence and there are possibilities of she can, she might land up in a drug addiction. So uh, it was very hard for me to convince her not to uh, get discharged on those sedative medicines. Yeah, though I explained the side effects. Okay. What alternatives you you gave here? She she was she, she told you you many times that she is not able and she will not be able to sleep again. What alternatives you offered for here? Well, I uh, I asked her to uh, take a sick leave for a couple of days and um, 
uh, and also to de-stress um, herself by taking off the work uh, for some time. That's what I could understood from the... Okay. So what do you know about insomnia, doctor? Insomnia is uh, like most of the times it is because of poor sleep hygiene, people who stay awake for a long Good. time. And Did you explain to hear the sleep hygiene, doctor? Um, I mentioned about the sleep hygiene, but I didn't explain about the sleep hygiene. How can she, she, she should she go to the internet and search for sleep hygiene? For sure, for sure, the examiner will not ask you like this, doctor, but I'm trying to be silly, you know? I'm yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's okay. fine. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I should have, uh, uh, I should have uh, given him the education about the sleep hygiene, um, how she can maintain her sleep hygiene. Like early to bed, she has to get up. Uh, like she has to go to the bed early, and she should make a single uh, hour for the sleep. Okay. And uh, so she may have that, a good. Okay. So do you think that this lady should be referred to a sleep clinic? Yeah, she should be. I I am not aware of that clinic actually. I heard it now. Oh. But she should be referred to the sleep clinic. If did there you, is one. Did you still hear that you were referring? Him? Sorry. I, I'm not aware of I'm not aware of that uh, sleep clinic. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. Thank you for your, your sharing with us. Uh, and please, doctors, look at the dashboard now. Oh, not this one, because um, I'm going I'm going to to write some things uh, on the. Okay. So, doctors, I will tell you something. The, the surrogates are well trained. Dr. Sami, you did well, but there is something I'd like to tell you about. Please, please, please show more empathy and sympathy. This is extremely important. You know, when you are entering, entering the station four, you are entering mm -hmm. the cinema, you are entering a movie. You will be an actor, and yes. the surrogate is an actor. And uh, the watchers are the examiners. So please do sympathy and empathy every one minute, every 30 seconds. Okay, I'm so sorry for this. And change your tone. I'm so sorry for this. Mm -hmm. I know you are suffering. Don't worry. Me and my team will be beside you. We will not leave you alone. We will search what's happening to you. Because you know, in a station four doctors, please notice that the surrogates are well trained about this. And, they, and it's written to them before they enter to you. They, they are telling them, if the candidate showed empathy and sympathy well to you, talk to him freely. Mm -hmm. If he did not show you sympathy and empathy, keep blocked. Mm -hmm. this, this is what they are trained for. So you should have, you should show more empathy and sympathy. Oh, I'm so sorry for this. You, did, you told me that you, don't, yeah, that you are not sleeping well for the last one month. Can you tell me more why? She didn't tell, tell you why she is. She didn't sleep. There is something hidden, for example, in this. She is having debts, financial issues. She's working as a secretary. And even you didn't ask. I, I, I try to, yes. I try to explore that, uh, why, why the job and all, but then she said she's stressed. Yes. And I, I, she's I stressed. intentionally, I intentionally didn't tell you because this is the core of mm -hmm. this case. This patient doesn't have insomnia because, uh, sorry, having insomnia because she is having a problem. Think this way, okay. because she is having a problem. Okay. Now it's your role to explore the, the problem. If she, if she, uh, if she uh, refused to tell, to, to tell you the problem from the beginning, or she didn't tell you everything, you have to, oh, so sorry. I know that you are having a special reason that we are making you cannot sleep well. Um, I, you know, I will be very happy and I'll be very helpful. I will decide you if you told me what are these reasons that making you not to sleep well. Can you please tell me what are these reasons? And then she will start crying and telling you, Doctor, yes, I'm having that. I'm having financial issues. I, I, I even, uh, I even uh, uh, sold my car last three months because um, I couldn't pay for my renting. You know. Like this, mm -hmm. and then 
you got the thing, yes, the yes. cause of this insomnia. Why she is having insomnia? She is having big financial issues. For sure, you are you mm -hmm. will not be able to solve all, all the things, but at least you have to explore. Okay. So I'll, okay. I'll tell you something. Yes. Okay. So the first thing is to establish why she wants a sleeping tablet, and you did this well. Okay. And I told you the surgeon mm. will not tell you except if you showed sympathy and empathy. Then okay. ask her, did you try? Uh, uh, now, now you ask it here why you want these tablets. Uh, no, don't say why, because why is a very bad word. It, 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 it is as if it is you are accusing her. Okay, I'm so sorry for this. I know that you are having your special reasons. Can you please tell me what are the reasons for whom you, for which you are asking for these tablets? This is the way. Don't okay. say there why you want this tablet. Okay. This is not a good way. By the okay. way, you didn't say this, but I'm just explaining to, to all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah did yeah, you yeah, try, yeah. Did you try any maneuvers before to help, to help solving this problem, like talking to a friend, going to the bank, or anything? So this is the social issue. Okay, then you should have screened here for anxiety and depression. For sure, you explored here for anxiety, but for depression, no. You did not ask about what about your mood. You told her that I'm going to refer you to the mood physician, but you did not ask about her mood. Patient doesn't have. My patient told you that she is sleeping only for two to three hours. She, for sure, for sure, she will be having some sort of depression. So at least you have to ask her the screening questions of depression. Can you please tell me what about your mood? I'm in a bad mood, doctor. Then once the patient tells you I'm in a bad mood or I am not myself, you have to ask about, dig more and more. Tell the patient, did you have, do you have any bad ideas or bad thoughts about life and death? Did you try to hurt yourself before? Then at this point, she will tell you, no doctor, uh, not like this. I'm just feeling depressed a little bit, okay? Then, then, uh, um, yes, I appreciate your concern and you appreciate her concern many times and you should make sure that she is fully informed about the risk of taking long-term hypnotics. This is very important. You said for her, for sure, it will, you will be dependent, but you have to tell her other things as well. Now, first one, yeah. it, the side effects of the sleeping tablet, tiredness, depression, as you said, dependence, uh, uh, with the rural symptoms like fits, seizures, and you know also by the time tolerance may happen. You know what's meant by tolerance? It means that after a period of time, the effect of these medications will be decreased and, and sometimes it will not be effective at all. Okay? In okay. this case, yeah. as I told you, you have to make a screening for depression and you have to exclude any suicidal attempts before? Did you try to hurt yourself before? Yes or no? Then, okay, uh, I prefer if you are following up out with your GB, but please, uh, if uh, I want to explain to you some things which are simple maneuver, yes, sometimes they take time, but it's better than taking a medication that will have serious side effects if taken, and by the time it will not be effective. So if you'd like me to tell you what are these maneuvers? Um, I am happy to tell you this. Okay, doctor, please tell me. Okay, so the sleep hygiene doctors, you should know them. Number one, please don't drink water or any fluid before going to the bed by two to three hours. These doctors write them down. Number one, don't drink water or any fluid before going to the bed by two to three hours. This is number one. Number two, Please try to sleep at the same time of the day, uh, of the night, same time of the night, every night, to trying to train your brain. Number three, please sleep in a dark, calm room. No TV while you are on the, on the bed, and don't, don't use your mobile even if, even if you are on the bed. Then number four, go for the bed, only for sleeping. Go for the bed only for sleeping. And maintain 
proper temperature while you are sleeping. This is, these are the, the sleep hygiene, simple sleep hygiene. They will be very helpful. Uh, uh, plus, if you refer the patient to, if you solve, if the patient tried to solve his main problem and went with this sleep hygiene, he mostly he will improve. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, doctors, uh, when the examiner asks you what do you mean, what do you know about insomnia? So, insomnia affects about 20% of population. 20%, you know, this is a huge number. 20% of population are not sleeping well. If you meet screening between physicians, you, <laughs> it may be more than 20 for sure. And females are more than males. And the insomnia may be, please, doctors, look at the board maybe primary insomnia or secondary insomnia. Primary, for sure, we don't know the cause of this insomnia. Secondary insomnia, it may be secondary to psychological problem. Stress. Like depression, stress, bipolar disorders, okay? Bipolar disorders. Uh, it may be due to physical problem. I mean physical disease like bronchial asthma, pain. renal failure, pain. artery failure, pain, as you said, hyperthyroidism, okay? Or it may be drug induced. Some medications like anti epileptic medications or antidepressants can cause insomnia, okay? So when you ask us about insomnia, insomnia cell is prevalent, about 20% of the people, more prevalent in females than in males. Uh, it may be primary, unknown cause, or secondary, secondary to psychological problem like depression, stress, or bipolar disorder, physical like renal failure, hyperthyroidism, heart failure, anything. Okay. Then come to the important okay. point. Uh, not, doctor. Yes, in the in the in the in the basis, most of the things you do, not most of the things, lots of the things you do is to refer the patients. But you know, you the the the, the consultant does not want you to refer every case to him or every case to other subspecialities except if you reach it your maximum. The patient came to you with mm -hmm. insomnia, you will not directly refer him to the mood physician or to the uh, sleep clinic. You should have referred him here if she is having severe depression, for example, or severe anxiety. But you would see here, here depression is not that severe. So how to manage the patient with insomnia. It depends. Is it short term insomnia? Short term or long term? So see, insomnia may not be a good issue for us because you know rare rarely we use medications. As you saw from the beginning, we are just we are talking with the patient and just we are uh, uh, we are uh, Till now, we always what we told here, we will uh, do some sleep hygiene for you. So for the management of the uh, short term, which what's meant by short term? Short term means the last less than one month. Long term, it's lasting with the patient more than one month. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm just. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, it's lasting uh, less than number one sleep hygiene. As we said, don't drink before going to the bed by three hours. Da sleep in a dark, calm room. Sleep at the same time of the day. Go to the bed for sleeping only. Don't sleeping only. Bed. Yes, don't read. Don't use it. Maintain temperature. And appropriate temperature. This, so number one sleep hygiene. Number two, those patients may need short-term hypnotics to be reassured again after, uh, sorry, reassessed again after two weeks. If still they are having this one, you will refer them to the psychiatrist to do cognitive behavioral therapy. This is the management of short-term insomnia. So sleep hygiene, medications, short-term hypnotics, for two weeks, reassess, CBT. it's still present, CBT. Then the long term, number one, again, sleep hygiene. Number two, things that are, most of them, no medications. Number one, 
relaxation therapy. This is number one. Number two, relaxation therapy like things like, like relaxation classes, breathing techniques, okay? Some uh, yoga. Okay, materials, they are called the relaxation, uh, relaxation therapy. Next is CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. Uh, then something called biofeedback. Biofeedback. What's meant by biofeedback? For example, close your eyes and start to uh, uh, close your eyes and start to uh, uh, count your breath, uh, sound, uh, breath uh, number of breaths per minute like this. And finally, something called sleep restriction therapy. The patients will be will be advised to restrict their sleeping hours so they eventually become tired again and establish a new routine to fall, to fall asleep. So you are preventing him from sleep or telling him or telling, telling him to stop sleeping for a period and then uh, uh, fall asleep again when they feel tired. So sleep hygiene and then uh, uh, the, the other terms, relaxation, CBT, biofeedback, and sleep restriction. When to refer the patient to sleep clinic? Doctor, there is a clinic called sleep clinic. You can find these clinics in the tertiary care centers, you know? It's in the tertiary care centers, not in primary and not in secondary uh, care hospitals. So, uh, uh, when to refer the patient to the sleep clinic? The sleep clinic, if it is uh, primary insomnia, Okay, or patient long term insomnia, long term insomnia, not responding to the treatment. So, if it is primary, or if it is, by the way, doctor, uh, if the patient is stressed, you cannot say that this primary insomnia. So, our patient is not a primary insomnia, it's a secondary to stress for sure. So, patient with primary insomnia, you cannot find the specific cause, or patient with long term. Uh, uh, long-term uh, uh, insomnia not responding to the treatment. So, so uh, as you saw here, first you should have tried sleep hygiene with here. If didn't work, so the next is short-term hypnotics. If didn't work uh, for two weeks, if didn't work, CBT. So this what was uh, that should have been ha done with this lady. Okay, doctors. Uh, I hope that it's clear now. Um, we are at the end of our yes. session. I'm sorry to come late today. Something happened unexpected. Happy to see you today. Uh, any questions, Thank doctor? You so much. Any questions? This doctor? was really hard, uh, hard case actually. It was really hard, hard and uncommon. Yes, and hard, yes, time. and uncommon. You know, hard uncommon. and uncommon. Yeah. Because the common cases are now common. Are uh, common cases. So yeah. expect, ex you, you should expect them to bring such cases. If you know the hard cases, the easy cases, like for example, explanation of the disease, multiple sclerosis, Huntington Korea, every this case, these cases are now uh, uh, well known. Okay, okay, doctor, asking for the WhatsApp group. This is a WhatsApp group, and this is a Telegram group. Okay, uh, any questions, doctors? We have to wrap things now and go to sleep because we just talked about sleep hygiene. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. No, Dr. Abdullah, you are very welcome at which time. Okay, doctors, uh, please uh, t take the, um, the, this um, link because I have to close the session now. Thank you very much and see you inshallah soon. Assalamu alaikum. By the way, doctors, this alaykum session will be uploaded on the YouTube channel. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you. Alaikum.